Hello. Time has come. Only one task remains. There's a dragon. And I'm going to slay it. I'm going to have a good time. As you'll notice, I've prepared a weapon just for this task. What better tool to slay a dragon with than a dragon slayer spear? It was literally forged for that job. So I upgraded it to the max. I've trained with my spear. I tried fighting Midir a few times with it. Just to make sure it would be, you know, something that I could really commit to. It looked like it was going to work. And I think it's going to work, based on what I've seen. As you will see, this is a zappy zappy spear. It's got lightning powers. <clears throat> Perfect for exploiting a dragon's weakness. Okay. Also, I, st <clears throat> I strapped a shield on my back that gives me HP recovery. I had it in my inventory. So might as well. I've come to the conclusion that it is prudent to try to just attack the head as much as possible. It did do like twice as much damage compared to hitting the tail or legs last time. So I'm going to try to face it kind of head on the best I can. see that coming occasionally. Occasionally I can see him preparing to do that. Oh. Fuck. Don't, don't kill me. Don't. don't. Wow. Lucky. I 
I'm a little afraid of what he'll do later in the fight. But um, at least early on, it feels like it'll be manageable if I just get better at learning his patterns of attacks. There's a decent amount of different stuff he can do. You just have to be prepared for whatever he does. Ready to run the right direction to avoid getting burnt and whatnot. I definitely also notice there's a easier direction to dodge his claw sweeps. Like it makes a difference if you dodge left or right when he's swiping left or right. It's different in each of those cases.
bad attempt. That's a lunge. I read it that time at least. Missing with that thing. Shit, but dragon bat. Ah. Oh, shouldn't have done that. Um, so we're almost dead. Still definitely lots of room for improvement.
I also got Sunlight Spear, which is like basically a lightning bolt you throw as if you're a Greek god like Zeus. It's pretty cool, but its usefulness will be limited because um, it uses about a third of my FP bar. And I want to save some FP to use the weapon skill of the spear because it's pretty powerful. Pretty powerful if you can get it to hit. Came out of that roll doing like an attack accidentally. I kind of was trying to attack earlier before the roll. And that just screwed me. Because then I was flat footed. Always bound to be a few attempts like that with any boss that takes this long, this many attempts to beat. Maybe I should just send this back up every time. It's probably slightly quicker than pulling the lever. See, that was a direct hit. That's what the skill of the weapon art of this spear does. If you really line it up with all the pokes to hit. Like that, more or less. Fuck. Ah!
fire is a little tricky. Fly so far away. Ah, oh, shit. That was devastating. Also devastating. Thunderbolt. Uh, out of FP. Out of range. One of these hit? Come on, just one. There's one. So it does a decent amount of damage. There's a lot of FP there. Who uses this at all the Blast? that just take me by surprise sometimes. Occasionally I can see it coming. Oh, that is a projectile, doesn't it? Dead. 
I pretty much never use this shield or have used any other shield for actual defense, like blocking wise in this game. Only reason I've ever used a shield is to have it strapped on my back for some bonus effect it has. Like the grass crest shield, stamina boost, or this. For a little bit of HP recovery over such a long boss battle. Boss battle. Bass bottle. I think that's what I said. been death anyway, so I gotta be careful of that. Gotta mind your location in this boss arena. Getting trapped up against a wall can definitely screw you, because the camera starts acting funny then and it throws you off. Hard to see the boss move. That's okay, though. By and large, I don't feel too overwhelmed by this fight yet. I've had other boss fights be more difficult at this stage early on, which ended up being like truly hellish experiences. Like, I'm really stunned at just how many bosses in this game I've struggled to beat for six hours or so. Like, there have been too many to remember, like that. They've just been kind of throughout the game, but... Later towards the end, more and more have been like that for me. Through the end of the base game and... Um, then into the DLC, where things really got turned up a notch here. Um,
826 damage in that head. It was just, he landed his head right where I needed it. Perfect position. So this weapon has damage potential. Against this dragon. Go the other direction. something new. Okay. Getting more aggressive with the dark laser breath. Oh fuck. A lot more aggressive. Well that's the first thing I learned about that next sort of phase. Unlike how when he does the laser breath.
Whoa. Hello. out after that. Okay, I need to take advantage of that moment. It's like the dragon has like overheated his engines at that point. Laser breath overheats him. Oh shit. What have you done?
Holy shit. No way. Whoa. Die, 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 die. Get slain by thunder. I have lightning bolts. Yes. Fuck yes. Spears of the Church, Soul of Darker Eater, Medir. Fittingly, I took the uh, Path of the Dragon gesture immediately when I won, because I just took the path of slaying the dragon. Now, also, let me do this. Hang on. Wow. So that's it. Well, that wasn't so bad. That was only like my second or third attempt at his last phase. To be honest, I would call Dark Eater Midir uh, one of the easier bosses in the whole game. Now, it could be that I just was very well equipped with my, you know, Dragon Slayer Spear. But, uh,. I'm someone who struggled, like, I took about six hours to beat Dragon Slayer armor. The Lothric Prince's um, Sister Freed uh, Slave Knight Gale, which I did just before this. Like, all of those took me six hours or more. Like, five to six hours-ish. None of them took, like, seven they were all like six, seven hours. Max. Like none of them were longer than that, but still. Dark Eater Medir here, like, I don't know, it was like an hour into last stream, and then I optimized my equipment a little, got my new spear, and here I am 45 minutes in tonight, and he's dead. That dragon is slayed. I'm happy. This ends my quest to beat Dark Souls 3 thoroughly. All bosses pretty much have been slain, I'm pretty sure, in both DLCs and all of the base game. Oh, it just looks like I'm dead now. Let's get up. <laughs> my armor's gonna rust in the water. Meaning this playthrough this mostly blind first time playthrough through Dark Souls 3 is complete once and for all so my opinion on the game well I can get to that for now though let me like this also, now that I can really look around, I can appreciate the environment down here. Oh, and all the corpses that are burnt to a char. Reaching for the pain and agony to stop. So, that's lovely. But what I really like is just that this is like an awesome underground cave. where he falls to after you beat him up high on the bridge. And then you have to later fall down him, and, uh, fall down after him through that opening over there. Like the whole thing reminds me of the start of two towers when Gandalf is falling with the Balrog through Moria, you know? And then they do battle. And it's very epic. I like it. Look at that, there's even water, a little waterfall over here. So hang on. 
What did I get? I got something that may have been a key item. All these scrolls I've just accumulated because... So this is one thing I'll complain about. There was a sorcerer in the Firelink Shrine. And he asked me for the longest time for a scroll, a sorcery scroll. I didn't come across any sorcery scrolls for a very long time until like later in the game. Almost beat the base game. And just due to the order I came to things, I guess. Um... Once I got all these scrolls, though, or got even the first one, that sorcerer guy just left. He's gone. Disappeared without a trace. So that's kind of weird. And, like, he was the only one who sold a bunch of different sorceries. And somebody else who sold sorcery also kicked the bucket way earlier. Like, a weirdo who sells you free levels and then you get cursed and end up looking like a dried blueberry because he did it. So, like, that's lame. Characters who were in your little hub world to sell you shit? Magic? That can help you, like, better enjoy the game and all it has to offer? They shouldn't just disappear for no apparent reason. It's just dumb. I don't feel like I did anything wrong in my exploration of the game, but... I didn't even get the option to explore, like, various other spells, sorcery-type spells, because of that little problem. Other thoughts on the game, though? I just have to reflect a little, since even though the credits aren't rolling again, I have now truly Beat and everything, all the DLC. Um, this is definitely not my favorite game in the Dark Souls trilogy. I played Dark Souls Remastered, then Dark Souls Scholar of the First Sin, then this, Dark Souls 3. Um, Fire Fades edition. So, one, two, three, one after the other. And after all that, probably have the most good memories from 2. 2, to me, had easily the best game mechanics kind of engine. Best physics of battle and how it felt, how it worked, how things were scaled in terms of your endurance being consumed and whatnot. Because here's the critical thing in Dark Souls 2 that makes it better in that regard, in my view. Dark Souls 2, you take a roll, and you're just about out of stamina. You can't just continuously roll like three to four times. Um, you only have enough stamina ever for most of that game, no matter how much you level up, to just take one roll, maybe two, then one swing of your weapon. And it's just more realistic, because... Being able to just roll five to six to seven, eight times in a row. If you did that shit in real life, as you can in Dark Souls 3 and 1, by the way. If you just level up stamina enough. If you did that shit in real life, you would get dizzy, fall over, and then smashed by whatever you were fighting. <laughs> like, they're, you know, reasonable, believable things about battle mechanics that should be in place that make it more uh, genuine and realistic and immersive feeling. So I like that about Dark Souls 2. Other thing I have to say about Dark Souls 2 that's better is the selection of magic. For one reason, hexing. That's the only reason I need. If you have an entire category class of magic that is all of the dark evil stuff, hexes, don't remove that from the game in the third installment. That's a mistake. You don't do that. The solution is to improve things by maybe having a few additional classes of magic. Don't take away what you got. 
Because what they had going in Dark Souls 2 was awesome. And definitely I felt the void of cool spells in this game. Like, there was just a sprinkling of dark magic, dark sorcery, a sprinkling of dark pyromancy here and there, two or three dark miracles, and most of them sucked. Most of them were terrible. There wasn't anything awesome like Dark Fog in Dark Souls 2, which is probably my favorite spell in Dark Souls, period. So yeah, that's an opinion. Also, this game is just too much like Bloodborne. Like, I played Bloodborne before this because it came out before this. It's another game I played from, from software in addition to the Dark Souls games, and I noticed instantly when I fucking started playing this game, like, from the enemies, to the environmental designs, to the battle mechanics, physics engine, whatever you want to lump all that into, um, everything felt almost exactly like Bloodborne. And Bloodborne is its own animal, its own beast very fast-paced and it works in that game but I would argue trying to just take the way that works in Bloodborne and just paint it with Dark Souls aesthetics doesn't translate the best like this is a game that should be more deliberate you should be more deliberate and thoughtful in your actions you shouldn't have to be always scrambling around to random bullshit, but that's just my opinion. Definitely a faster, more chaotic game. But this is just my opinion. Fresh right now, after beating all three. I by no means think any of them are bad games. I would probably rank them 2, 1, 3. I even think 2 is better than 1, yep, so sue me. For us people who are into the dark, like, you, you gotta be into the dark to understand why I like 2 so much, okay? Like, like go look up Falcon, go talk to Falcon and Drangleic. He'll explain it to you, how Drangleic is the place for dark. Which I love. Dark magic. Dark magic. Excuse me. something in my throat there but to comment a little more I think Dark Souls 1 has the best level design neither 2 or 3 blew me away with like their shortcuts and the way areas were interconnected as much as 1 and instantly you had the ability to travel in 3 just like 2 so there was definitely more of a fast travel thing going on that was dominating the organic exploration and finding of massive time-saving shortcuts between huge areas of the game and the first game, like, level design was a work of art in the first game. So I think it has the best level design. But I want to give Dark Souls 3 some credit too, because one thing I really love that this game did was, uh, it gave you the FP meter. And linked that to all your skills and added the skills as well weapon skills which are awesome and also linked that to all your magic use which i think is good because that way the size of your fp bar and how much mana so to speak you have to cast spells and use skills that's dependent on how you level up and grow your character i like that that ability to tune you know, tune with uh, what you choose to invest all the points into. How much capacity for how much magic you need, you know? So I think that was an improvement. Honestly, probably the only thing that I would say Dark Souls 3 has going for it, in my opinion, over the first two games. It's just that one change. That and the weapon arts. That and the weapon arts are both awesome. But, kind of as I've detailed, each of the three games has awesome shit going for it. 
that I really like. So there isn't one that I would call a bad game. I love all three. And I'll probably revisit all three on my own time, mostly off stream. But now, I am done. I am done with Dark Souls for now. I did just purchase Dark Souls Remastered for the second time on PS4 because I got like a super cheap copy of it for 20 bucks in addition to my $40 copy of it on Switch. The reason I did that is because it's on, well, it's just better quality on PS4, I realized. And I didn't even have a PS4 back when I played Dark Souls 1 just six months ago. That's when I was introduced to Dark Souls for the first time, just six months ago. Didn't have a PS4 at that time. Got a used one recently. Now I gotta worry about getting a PS5 for playing the future games at better frame rate. Like that seriously might make me delay playing Sekiro and, you know, Elden Ring. Wait till I can get some PS5 or iteration of it. Because I think 30 FPS which this was, I think that made it harder. I played it 30 FPS on a PS4, and it was a little, you know, frame droppy at times in boss fights. Couldn't have made it easier. I think people who play at 60 FPS probably have an actual advantage in the game being less difficult. Anyway, what I was saying about Dark Souls 1 Remastered, Dark Souls Remastered, is that I got it on PS4 to experience the 60 FPS. And also just better graphics overall, they're just a little bit better on PS4. Very few uh, details that are actually more faithful to the original that are missing in the Switch version, oddly. So yeah, I'm going to come back to Dark Souls Remastered at some point, and the uh, biggest reason for that is it's the only game of the three that I haven't experienced the DLC for. That was one flaw of Dark Souls 1. You beat the game, and it instantly puts you in New Game Plus. No chance to explore the environments you've, you know, gradually unlocked. No chance to go and experience the DLC. You have to start all over, so I missed the DLC. Did not experience it. I've heard good things, though. I also heard it's hard. I'm kind of doubtful that Dark Souls 1 DLC could be harder than Dark Souls 3 DLC that I just finished, however. But I'll tackle that at some point. With the benefit of 60 FPS. No damn 30 FPS hindering my inputs. Command inputs, button inputs. So yeah, so ends my trilogy of first time playthrough of Dark Souls. Could have raised that sentence better. <laughs> I played the trilogy for the first time. It is done now. Got the credits to roll. If I stream anything from these games again, it's most likely to be Dark Souls Remastered on my new PS4 at enhanced frame rate, and definitely I would stream the DLC of that. Until then, though, I am done. Feels so good to have this closure. This game took me probably longer than the first two games to beat. For sure. Just because so many bosses took too damn long. Uh, this is another criticism. Some of the bosses in this game, they don't need as much HP slash defense or as many phases as they have at certain times. Like, in my opinion. Like, mostly it feels like a good balanced game to me. You know, some of the fights were just hard for me personally. But, yeah, they pushed it with some of those bosses, in my opinion. For what is reasonable. 
but I triumphed nonetheless over every challenge. So thanks to anybody who watched this journey. And um, it was fun. See ya when I'm playing another game. Later.